So once we move into the summary of the type of ratios, we have inverse ratio as you told, if you have a ratio 3 is to 5, it's inverse ratio is 5 is to 3. Compound ratio, when you have two or more ratios, multiply all the consequence, multiply all the antecedents, take the ratio of the corresponding antecedent to the corresponding consequent and you get the compound ratio. Yes, as we did, we say A is to C and B is to D. Suppose you have the compounded ratio is AB is to CD. Right. Duplicate ratio, as we told, is a square ratio. So, suppose the ratio is A is to B, it's duplicate ratios. A square is to B square. So, suppose you have 5 is to 7, it's duplicate ratio is 5 square, 25 is to 49. Triplicate ratio is the cube ratio. So, suppose you have a ratio 4 is to say 1, it's triplicate ratio is 4 cube, 64 is to 1 cube remains the same, 64 is to 1. Subduplicate ratio, as I told you, is almost a reciprocal relationship here. This is the square root ratio. So suppose you have a ratio, say, 49 is to 81. So it's subduplicate ratio, square root of 49, that is 7, is to square root of 81, that is 9. Subtriplicate ratio is cube root ratio. So suppose you have... Uh, 729 is to 64, then the subtriplicate ratio is a cube root of 79. 729, that is 9, is to cube root of 64, that is 4. Continued ratio, when the number of terms is more than 2, we take it as a continued ratio. So, suppose you have 2 is to 3 is to 5 is to 6 and so on. So, this is a continued ratio. The ratio continues with more than 2 terms. So that's a brief summary of the types of ratios they have. Now let's quiz ourselves whether we can really apply this in a much better level than what we did right now.